Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to uh, put a stage of fertilizer on our field, and then we're going to probably sleep until January and harvest our sugar beets. Okay, so as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, I have 30, uh, 134000 125 bucks. So I made about $30,000 on all the contracts. So I did all of the plowing contracts. Uh, plus there was one cultivating and one um, haying contract. So so we got all those done. It took me a long time too because, excuse me, the, um, the plow that was provided with the largest field was actually not a very large plow. Um, so it took me forever. So the next time I'm looking at plowing contracts, I'm going to either make sure that the largest field has a big plow or either or not do it or we'll lease one of the big plows ourselves because it just it just took me way way too long to do it but i did get it done i persevered and got it done uh all right so let's go into the um the uh, store here and uh let's actually look at sales okay i think we've already looked no this is actually some of this is new we don't need a loader. This looks like a wrapper, which we wouldn't need. And what is this? Conveyor belts are, are turning away to lay your trays. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that's like a hay elevator or something. It would be awesome to be able to get this uh, Massey Ferguson uh, combine, but we just can't afford something like that right now. Uh, so let's go to here. What we're going to do is we're going to rent ourselves the uh, fertilizer spreader, just this cheap one. Uh, which also happens to have a huge 42-meter, uh, in fact, uh, spread rate. Uh, I've considered even buying this because if we buy this, you know, fertilizer contracts when they come up are some of the most lucrative contracts to do. And this, I mean, if you look at these other spreaders, oh, okay, this one will do up to 42 meters too, actually. Hmm. Plus, oh, but you know what? This one doesn't do lime either. These do lime. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that right now, though, uh, because to lease this guy is only going to cost us, what, twelve seventy five. So let's just lease it. We don't have enough uh, capital right now to, to be buying a bunch of extra equipment, particularly stuff that's not, you know, like our main thing. Not that we have a main thing quite yet. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to buy ourselves a bag of fertilizer. Okay, there we go. And it's raining too, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go ahead and hook up to this and load up the fertilizer. And I'm thinking that we'll probably have plenty of fertilizer with this bag um, to do our field and probably do it, you know, two or three times over, in fact. So let's get this loaded real quick before the, uh, the rain gets the fertilizer all wet and cakes it up and causes us all kinds of problems. There we go. It's loaded up and it's covered, so we're good. Yeah, the <laughs> those plowing contracts were brutal, you guys. Oh, man, it just, I, I was starting to, I wonder, you know, I wonder if, in, in real life, you know, when farmers have really big fields to do, if their eyes start playing tricks on them after a while, because I was starting to see things. <laughs> I'm just watching that trying to go up and down and up and down. It's like, oh, man. I You know, and, and in hindsight, I should have just bit the bullet and went and leased one of the big plows. I would have lost some money, but I would have gained some time because, man, it took a long time. All right. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and I'm thinking this is a very wide it's like 42 meters so why don't we start right here let's do a little test spread and just see if we're you know and, and adjust if needed and that's as far uh, okay that's as oh i guess i can go way out can't i all right so let's do this oh wow okay yeah we can uh we can actually go even more further this way Let's try right about here-ish. That looks just about right. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to get over to the left just a tad. I 
I might have missed one little area uh, along the edge there, but if we did, we'll we'll deal with that later, I suppose. Okay, so now let's get back over to this side. Oh man, we could almost do this in two passes, huh? Just about. Let's turn our lights on. It's kind of dark. All right, so let's get right smack dab in the center here. Yeah, look at that, man. We can do our whole field in two passes with this spreader. That is amazing. Oh, I'm actually missing a little bit on the edge over there. That's okay. Okay, turn that off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, open the help menu, and we can press uh, control Z to reduce the width of this guy. Okay, so let's just get this little section here. And maybe go up here, and then let's also get this one. That way we're not, you know, doing the the full spread there and wasting a bunch of fertilizer. We missed a little tiny spot right there. All right, let's check the map and see how it looks. Okay, I'd say it looks pretty good. Um, there's no that that little strip was there before, because uh, the light blue shows the first stage of fertilization. Now, what from what I understand, because I did a little bit of reading up on this, uh, and maybe you guys have left comments uh, for me too, but I haven't seen them on the fertilizer yet. Is that I don't think we can we have to we can't fertilize twice when the plants are in the same growth stage. So this is probably the first growth stage, I think, for our hay. So we have to wait until at least the next growth stage before we can, you know, apply the second uh, application of the fertilizer. So I believe that's the way it works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here and we should be able to drop this fertilizer off. And I'm not, let's see, what side is it going to come off on? Let's, let's do this. Let's just back up into here because we do have the pallet fork now so we can move it later. Well, let's go to here and then if we press I to unload. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So it unloads the rest of the fertilizer into a pallet and we can, you know, use it later on. Very cool. All right. Fertilization is done. Let's return the spreader. Uh, or actually, I guess we don't have to return it. They'll come and get it, right? Okay. They'll come and get it for us. Without charging an extra fee, so... Whoops. As long as I don't run into it and break it, that is. All right, now let's go to here. Fertilizer spreader and uh, return. There we go. Nifty. Okay, so now our field um, has a, the first stage of fertilization. The yield bonus is now up to 70-ish, 80-ish, whatever. Uh, but, like I said, what we'll do is we'll wait for the next growth stage and then we'll do another application. We'll just lease the spreader again. I wish there was a little bit cheaper spreader for us to use, but there isn't in the vanilla game. Now, I know there's a lot of mods out there, um, but, you know, for my first playthrough of Farming Simulator, I'm, I'm trying to go light on the mods. Uh, I do have a couple mods installed, as you guys probably know, but I don't want to go hog wild on the mods for my first playthrough. I want to, you know, kind of get that vanilla experience. Uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, there are no more contracts uh, left in November. Uh, see, nothing's coming up. And um, 
you know, winter is going to be upon us, but we need to wait until January before we sell our beets. Um, let's see. We want to look at this. Uh, we, I decided to go with sugar beet cuts, um, because they sell for more than, than the beets themselves. And January is going to be our best time to sell for the cuts. So the plan's going to be that we're going to rent or lease, rent, lease, whatever. Uh, this guy here, this thing here, um, and it's going to cost us 790 bucks to lease it, which is not that big a deal. Uh, and what this does is it scoops up the beets and then it chops them and, and we'll chop them right into our trailer. And then, you know, and then go sell them. So I don't know how many trailer loads it's going to take uh, for our pile of beets over there. If, if I'm, if, if, you know, looking at it visibly is a one-to-one -one thingy, I'm going to guess it's probably going to take us five trailer loads maybe. But I could be completely wrong. It might only take us two or it might take us ten. I don't know until we get in and, and try it. Uh, but that is the plan. So here's the deal. I am going to sleep until, uh, well, I'm going to sleep till December. I'm going to see if there are any contracts in December. If there aren't, I'm going to continue to sleep until January. And then I will either bring you back in December if there are contracts to do and show you what those are. If there aren't, I will bring you back in January and then we will harvest our sugar beets. Okay, so I'll see you pretty quick all right guys welcome to january it's a bright brisk sunny day here in january in elm creek and um nothing has changed with our grass at least i don't think it's in the a, a new stage it just says it's growing it doesn't look any larger um and i did check the contracts uh, for the rest of november and into december and nothing happened, uh, except for that this barrel turned into a snowman. <laughs> so we had a little snowman in the yard. It did snow on December 1st, but it was a, a light snow and there was no accumulation. And, of course, there's no snow on the ground here now in January, which is a good thing because we got to work our beets. So the plan is that we're going to go ahead and actually let's check the prices again just to make sure that everything is still uh, as we expect it to be. So sugar beet cuts. Um sale for the most here in january so we're good to go there we're going to get two a price of 210 whereas the beats themselves only give 157 so i think that's going to be worth it uh let's call up the shop and ask them to prepare a, a front loader tool for us uh specifically this guy here uh we're going to need that to it's going to cost us 790 dollars to lease we're going to need that to chop the beats and while we're at it, too, let's look at see what's in the sales. So what is this? This looks like a cedar or planter of some sort. Actually, it'll tell us here. Planters are a special type of cedar that are used for crops like maize, sunflowers, or soybeans. Okay. What is this? This is a, tr a log transporter, and this is an auger wagon, also known as a chaser bin. Used in the field for temporarily storing different crop types and directly unload into other trailers that's cool but none of that stuff is stuff we uh really need right now uh not to mention a ford uh so yeah let's uh go get our bucket and get started with our beat uh sale looking forward to this i hope we make ourselves a tidy little sum uh, let's turn our lights on uh, from these beats because we need the money for sure. Oh, you know what, too? I don't... Uh, we might have a bit of a problem with the uh, with the front loader. Oh, speaking of which, we need to actually put the front loader attachments on. We might have a little bit of a problem with the front loader getting heavy with the bucket. So we might... We should probably just go ahead and invest in a weight for this tractor. Um, or I guess we could put, uh, we could maybe put the wind rower on the back as a counterweight. Not that that's really all that, <clears throat> excuse me, heavy, heavy. How much do weights cost? Are we only talking a, a re reasonably small amount of money here? Yeah. 
Yeah, they're not that expensive. And we could certainly use one too, right? So why don't we do that? Let's get ourselves a weight. I have no idea which one to get. I mean, the cheapest one, 650 bucks. That's a Kloss. We got a Tenwinkle, a John Deere, another Kloss. I guess these are just heavier weights, right? But I mean, even the heaviest ones are are still not that much money. I, I just don't know what kind of weight we should be looking at. So the, <clears throat> that's 600 to 1,200 kilograms. Uh, so I guess you can configure it, right? And, of course, the price goes up. Oh, that's a front weight. Oh, okay. We, we need to make sure we get a rear weight. So how do we... I thought... Does that matter, though? I thought they you could put them on the front or the back. Maybe that particular one can only go on the front and back. See, these are just giving me color options, not other adjustments. Whereas this one... Yeah, that's got to be... That's got to be front or back. I, I can't imagine... Because none of the rest of these are specifying if it's front or back. Except for the Colossus one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> know what to get. Well, all right, let's just get um one that looks cool. How's that sound? Uh, I mean, they all look like weights, though, right? So, how about the seven hundred dollar one? And let's see, our tractor's red, so we could make it red. Ooh, that's like bright red, isn't it? Yeah, let's go with that color. That matches our tractor at 650 kilograms. And, oh, we could lease this? How much does that cost? Three, uh, 38 bucks to lease it? Oh. Nah, let's buy it because I think we're going to need it for, you know, for lots of different things. So let's just buy it. It's not that much money. Okay, let's head on down to the shop and... Get our weight in our bucket and start chopping some sugar beets. Okay, here we are. Let's connect to this. Uh, why isn't that connected? There we go. Oh, I wonder if this weight's going to actually be enough weight. We connect it from this, uh, probably the other side. That's actually smaller than I thought it was going to be. Hopefully it'll be enough. Okay, here we go. One of you guys mentioned to me in the comments, too to maybe look at purchasing a, a sugar refinery. Um, not a bad idea. I did look at that, but they cost like 80, uh, a sugar mill rather, they cost like $80,000. So we could do that, but that's going to really strap us for cash. Uh, and also we don't really have a good area on this property. Put something like that. So I, I want to wait until we kind of have our permanent farm before we start thinking about production facilities. Um, plus, the other thing is if I did that, then that would kind of commit me to being a sugar beet farmer, uh, which I you know, haven't made that kind of decision yet as to what we're ultimately going to do. I mean, I might be a sugar beet farmer. I'm not opposed to that idea, but, you know, I, I just haven't really considered any of that stuff at this point because we're still you know pretty early into the to the playthrough i think so we'll see how things go but i think for now it's just going to make more sense for us to just sell the beets straight up or well we're going to chop them first of course but okay so let's put our trailer right about here where we can get to it easily look at that shiny beet bucket <laughs> All right.
Okay, so let's put our bucket down. Oh, it's full already? Wow. Okay. Looks like we can get it up in the air without flipping. Yeah, we definitely needed a weight on the back of here, and I'm I'm wondering if, <laughs> if the weight's even enough. Yeah, look. Oh, yeah, we're a little front heavy. We're gonna have to be careful here. I can just you know kind of tell by the way the tractor's behaving there. All right, now how do we turn this thing on? We turn on front loader tool B, or I'll just use my wheel. Okay, here we go. Neat, man. Look at it chopping those things up. Awesome. Okay, all done. Looks like it turns off automatically after it's done doing its chop chopping. Doesn't take long to fill this thing up, man. We probably want it to be fairly straight up and down for the chopping, I would guess. And we don't want to get too nutso here with... Oh, yeah, see the back end of the tractor flipping up in the air? Okay, yeah, we're going to <laughs> have to watch that. I'm glad we bought the extension for this trailer, too. I think that's going to, you know, definitely help us get a little bit more product in here. I guess really right now the question is, you know, how how much can we get in one load? I don't know, just, you know, kind of looking at things. I'm going to guess I'm going to guess th three loads. Maybe I could be completely off. I mean, we could get it all. Well, I don't think we're going to get it all in one load. Whoops. Yeah, I'm going to guess three loads at this point, and then we'll see. Yowzers. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little leery about taking it too high. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's filling it up. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna say at least three loads. Actually, I'm I might. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. All right, I'm going to guess that the trailer's loaded because it's not letting me put any more in. So let's lower this down. You know what we could probably do, too? We could take an extra bucket load with us, right? I'll bet. If, well, if it'll let us chop them right on into the unload area. I guess we'll find out, right? Okay, so I think we're going to the biogas plant with this stuff. We'll double check it one last time before we commit.
right, so sugar beet cuts. Uh, no animal dealers actually given one dollar more. Okay. Well, then let's go to the animal dealer. Do we have a cover for this trailer? Just out of, just curious. Uh, we need to switch to that. Cruise control, tip side back, unload here. No, nah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. So apparently our trailer can only hold 73%. Why isn't it filling all the way up, I wonder? Hmm, that's weird. It says that in the lower right-hand corner of the screen down by the speedometer. Is it because if it was any heavier, my tractor wouldn't be able to pull it very well? I don't get that. Alright, so one of the things that I want to confirm here is does the price change after we drop off our first load? Is this actually where we're even supposed to do this at? Uh, this is where we drop hay off. You'd think they would want this though in a silo somewhere, right? Uh, here, let's look at the map for a second. No, nope, there's only two places to drop off at the animal dealer, and this is for buying animals. So, yeah, this is the spot. Okay. Uh, let's do the trailer first. Beep, 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 beep. All right, sugar beet cut, start overloading I. All right, so we are now currently at 128.47, and the price is currently 211 here at the animal dealer. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so we made thirty-seven ninety-four off of that trailer load. And can I Why are my front wheels not engaging? Oh, maybe they only go down when the trailer's heavy. I'll bet you that's what it is. Now I don't know if I can chip these right into the thing. Um Yeah, see, it's not giving me the option to unload these, so I don't think we can do that. I don't think we can do that. Well, we tried, right? Okay, let's back this back up into the spot again, and I'll just dump the beets into the trailer and dump them then into the thing. Should be able to just get right over it from here, I would imagine. Okay. We definitely don't want to do this if it turns out that the price changes every time we Okay. 
You know what? Let's, let me just try something here. I got a tiny bit left. What happens if I just drop those here? Will it actually sell? Oh, it does. It does sell. Okay, good. That's good to know. All right. So we can do that. It just wasn't bringing up the thingamadoodle. So, so it is worth our while to bring an extra bucket out just to get, you know, a little more bang for our buck with each trip. Okay, I'm glad I decided to try, to try that. Four hundred and twenty-one. Now let's go here, and so the price hasn't changed. It's still two eleven at present. So we ha we haven't affected that with that first load. So hopefully it'll stay that way. You know, for for the whole rest of our our time here. Okay, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, um, I think. Yeah, let, let's do a little bit of a time lapse here, and uh, we'll show a little bit more loading, a little bit more hauling, a little bit more selling, and get all these beats moved, and we'll see where we're at by the time it's all said and done. I'm hoping, uh, you know, we can get. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where we're gonna get. We'll see where we get. <laughs> we'll get where we get. guys we are finished selling our sugar beet cuts we'll take a look and see how much we made in total uh, and we might as well return the bucket while we're here at the store 
And yeah, I uh, that was four carts, almost, almost exactly. Just that there's like seven percent left over at the end there that I and I just took it to the biogas factory since the price was the same anyways. Um, all right, so let's drop this guy off here and uh, make sure that we got it selected. We we'll return this. Leases, front loader tools, return. All right, did we already look at this stuff? Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, none of that stuff that we need. All righty, so let's, um, are there any contracts? Apparently you don't get contracts in uh, December and January, maybe not February either, because I haven't seen anything. Uh, but if we go into here, we can see that in January, we made a total of $17,163 from harvest income. And of course, that all is from sugar beets. <clears throat> so that brings us up to 144, almost $145,000. And uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind about that sugar beet harvest is I, I'm not the one that planted those. Those were planted before we bought the property. And we didn't get the full um, bonus from that because the field, you know, wasn't fully prepared. But, you know, it is what it is. So had we planted those from the get-go on that field, we would have done all of the field prep and got the maximum yield from it. Uh, so that's something to consider. Uh, but what that does tell us is that from that particular field, um, we can expect, if we fully prepared it, probably to get somewhere around 20 grand from a sugar beet harvest on that field. I'm, I'm you know, roughly, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so where does that leave us? Um, there's no contracts. Our hay isn't ready. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe we should actually buy that fertilizer spreader. And the reason for that is because we're going to need to lease it again anyways to do our field on the next growth stage. But also... You know, fertilizing contracts are probably going to come up in the spring. And if we already have the spreader and the one that does the, you know, the massive um, width, we might be, you know, further ahead just to buy it and take all of those contracts. The only thing, like I said, we can't do with that is we can't spread lime. But if we get a lime contract, we'll just have to, we'll just use the owner's equipment at that point in time. Now, the other thing I'm thinking about doing is possibly investing in a greenhouse. But I'm a little bit hesitant to I'm a little bit hesitant to buy production facilities of any kind on this property because it isn't really my intention uh, you know to stay on this property f f uh, permanently. And so that brings up something we could consider. We could consider selling it. And I'm assuming that selling property that has a planted field gives you more value than one that doesn't because we've already, you know, invested in the hay. Or we could wait till we get at least one cutting off that hay before we consider selling it. And then looking for something a little bit better and a little more permanent. So these are just, you know, some things that I'm kind of thinking about here. And also the grass is coming up too, you know, just the meadow grass. And uh, that will be able to cut for an additional profit too. And when we do harvest our own hay, we're definitely going to, you know, do silage and we're going to let it ferment this time. I, did, I just didn't realize, you know, the first time I did it around that we actually had to wait for it to ferment because you don't have to wait for it to ferment on contracts. And that's all I had done up to that point until one of you guys told me in the comments that, yeah, you have to, you know, wait, wait for it to ferment. So anyway, I'm just, you know, I'm just weighing all the options and what the, the next best move for us is going to be uh, right now. And uh, again, I'm not sure what that move is going to be, but um I think what we'll do is we'll probably stay here at least until we can get one harvest off of this field that we planted along with, you know, all of this, the side grass too. And then after that, you know, make a decision. Now, if we went into the map right now um, and wanted to sell our property, 
we would get $140,000 for it. Wow. Okay. So that would bring us up to 380, about 385 if we sold it now. So then it's a question of what would we buy next? See, these are, these are pretty good size fields. This is a really big field. In fact, this field I, is one of the ones I plowed on that contract. The other cool thing about it is it's right next to water. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's got a little extra, whoops. It's got a little extra land here that we could use to put, you know, maybe a farmhouse or something on. Hmm. But that would, that would take almost all of our money. And I don't know if... I, I'm sorry, I keep exiting out, not meaning to. It doesn't look like that field has anything on it. It's just in the plowed state that it was in when I did the contract. So that means we would also have to invest in putting a crop on it. And it's got stones on it. It is plowed, though, so, you know, there is that. So that that's a possibility, but, you know, I... I I, I want to look around at other options. You know, another option, too, is that we buy the Elm Street Farm. Uh, that's 156000 which we would easily be able to afford if we sold this property. Or what might even be better is for us to keep this property and then also buy this one and just expand our territory and then maybe, you know, down the road, keep buying up these other farms until this whole, like, whole block is ours. Now, that's something to think about, too. The nice thing about the Elm Street farm is it's got, it's already got a shed and a barn on it. Um, yeah, so it's got that barn. I don't know if that's a functional silo or if that silo is just, let's go over and look at it. This is a limed field with a bunch of weeds in it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know if this is an actual working silo. The thing is enormous if it is. Uh, or if it's just part of the barn, but it's got a barn and it's got a shed on it. And well, t I guess, I don't know what this building is. What happens if we click this thingamadoodle? Liming, it just talks about liming. Okay. So this doesn't look like it's a building that we could actually make use of. But, you know, we got three, it comes with three small fields. And this is barley. What is, what's growing over here? Uh, wheat. And yeah, look at this barn. This is kind of a neat barn. Oh. Wow, it's even got like a lower section here. You can't open those doors though. Oh, neat, man. It's like got a work sh workshop and everything. I wonder if this is a functional workshop, like we could repair our tractor and stuff from in here. This is really cool. I didn't even know that was down there. Um, does that do anything? Okay, if we can't open these doors, we can't really store anything down here. Maybe we can if we own the place. But there's, you know, there's room for storing things in here. Wow, this is a neat barn. It would be especially neat if the silo actually is functional. I, I don't know if it is, though, because most of the silos that are functional have, like, you know, one of those little icon thingamadoodles outside them. And I'm not seeing one outside that one, but... Maybe it becomes functional if you own it. I'm not sure. It's a neat place, though. Um, so, you know, just di various different things like that that I'm, I'm trying to consider uh, yeah, in terms of what our next move should be. What does this do if we click on it? Build mode menu. Okay, that just tells us about the build menu. When you, uh, if you start the game in, in easy mode... You uh, you automatically own this farm too, by the way, which is kind of cool. Get some water water tanks. Hmm. 
Okay, so that's an option, or, you know, another option is to... Is to, um, you know, look for another piece of land instead. Uh, the thing that does appeal about this place, though, is it comes with the barn and the shed already, so we wouldn't have to purchase those separate. And if we also kept this land too, you know, then and do what, like I said earlier, we just kind of start expanding out from here and start eventually owning all of this land. That's, you know, that's definitely something we can think about too. But, you know, that's that's a ways out. We're not, we're not quite ready to go that, that crazy yet with it. But any hoozle. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to let you go here. And uh, apparently, uh, you know, I haven't seen any contracts whatsoever in the winter. So I'll, I'll, I'll sleep till February. I'll check the sales. Um, you know, I'll check, I'll check the sales. I'll see if any contracts come up in February, but if none do, I'll probably sleep all the way till March. And then my guess is once March rolls around, we will be able to a uh, fertilize our hay. Cause it'll probably be into the next stage. I wish there was a way you could tell what stage it is. Maybe there is, but not by looking at it. It just says growing. Uh, what if we go into here? And, um, you know, and hopefully contracts will start coming up too, and we'll have to just keep working those, you know, for the time being until we can get to the point where we start owning more and more of our own stuff. Yeah, so it says that there's grass on there, but it doesn't tell me anything about... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on a second. So this is showing... This is showing dark green as if it's fully grown, but that is not fully grown hay. No way. See, I thought when you look at this graph here, the darker it gets, you know, the further along it is. So this would seem to indicate that our hay is fully grown, but it's not fully grown. So I don't know. I'm confused about that. That seems really weird. Hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, like I said, um, I will probably not bring you back until March unless, you know, something happens in between now and then, um, you know, for me to bring you back. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm okay with, you know, the money we made off the, off the sugar beets. Uh, I was hoping we'd get a little bit more than that, but you know, it is what it is. We made $17,000, so it is what it is. And, you know, we'll just keep on keeping on here. So, anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share the video. And we will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.